Henry said that I had to say something about myself, so I'll just show you um, my LinkedIn page. So there's my job experience. I started out um, year 2000 by working with uh, IDMS databases, strangely enough. As if that were that complicated enough, uh, I then started working with Oracle, uh, mostly as a developer. Uh, then I moved on um, to being a sort of a, a junior DBA. Uh, then I uh, went to Aves Consulting, where I I would say that I learned most of my jobs. And uh, we also had a uh, Oracle tuning tool that I was developing. And then now, for the last four years, I've been with Miracle Finland. And that's it for me. So, uh, the title of the presentation is MySQL 5, uh, 5 Diagnostics. Okay. I was just saying that this works surprisingly nicely, but now I'm having trouble getting into the slideshow mode. Okay. Now I would say something nasty about Linux. If I were not a fan, I hope you can see. It. Now, do the customers you're talking about the customers that use uh, Linux with MySQL and everything? Do they use Oracle's uh, enterprise Linux, or do they just use anything? Uh, usually Debian. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's what I see the most Debian based. Yeah, it's quite popular. Yeah. So, uh, the topic of uh, the presentation is MySQL five. Five diagnostics. I will actually um, talk a bit about uh, the enhancements in 5.6, but my one and only example case is for 5.5. 5.5 is currently the uh, supported release, but um, as we will learn, uh, as of the monitoring and diagnostics features, 5.6 is much, much better. Uh, we will look into um, pre 5.5 monitoring features as well and uh, there's shortcomings. Um, and then I have one slide about um, Linux enhancements that's sort of interesting, but um, maybe not that relevant to this presentation. So first about um, Oracle's plan to kill MySQL. <laughs> so I, um, I'm pretty sure you all remember how everybody was um, all over place screaming how Oracle will just silently kill off my sequel when they purchased it. Turns out something's changed. Um, license fees did go up a bit, but there's still a far cry from what um, Oracle RDBMS costs. Um, Oracle acquisition did cause several um, fork projects. Perpona was there uh, bit before that. Uh, then MariaDB is something Monty came up with. A couple of others. I don't think they're relevant anymore as of 5.5, but that's just my opinion. What do you mean it's not relevant? Well, um, I, I, I think uh, the Vanilla release now has, um, at least uh, performance-wise, um, enough features. Um, so that I, I, I wouldn't recommend my customers to use any, anything like Vercona at the moment. I would re recommend them to start with um, 5.5. 5. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But that's just me. I'm, I'm mostly a performance analyst, so I, this, this is the stuff I care about. Um, these are just the uh, basic 5x5 uh, um, new features, and as you can see, I'm all into the machine because I think that's the single most important um, enhancement. 5x5 um, also um, does include lots of core performance enhancement, especially when it comes to redo handling. So instance recovery is orders of magnitude faster now than it used to be. And also redo writing under any activity is much better. And that 
that's something that Oracle did. Uh, or actually, the Oracle Sun engineers found out and corrected. So before 5.5, .5, um, MySQL diagnostics were, uh, in my opinion, a bit of a mess. Uh, you have different sorts of counters, you can um, do some stuff uh, at home using show commands, you have the slow query log, um, different um, network methods, and then profiling. I will go through this quickly. So, um, as I mostly work with Oracle, I, I usually um, reference Oracle um, features in, in my presentations. And this is why I, I have these Oracle V$ dollar views here. So these system session counters are basically the same kind of information that Oracle has had since what, version 6. So different sorts of counters that are uh, available either on system level or per connection. Now the problem with this um, approach is that um, in MySQL you can only see your own session counters, you can query another session counters. So unless you've built um, this capability in your application, it's sort of useless for um, trying to troubleshoot something or a third party application or something because you, you can only look at the system-wide stats and it's really hard uh, to get any detail out of that. And uh, your own session is basically pretty useless because it's outside the application. Um, these counters are usually used with some sort of a repository. Um, more often than not, it is Cacti or uh, Teamstat. Um, it is, Teamstat is a tool by Dimitri uh, Kravchuk, um, who now works with Sun, a former, uh, I mean Oracle, a former Sun employee. Um, it's a pretty good tool that you can use basically with uh, any kind of source. And there's also nowadays a Oracle Enterprise Monitor plugin that collects this information and publishes it in, in, in read control. Um, show process list, um, again, there's an Oracle reference here. It, it sort of, uh, shows you um, session information and a bit of SQL information. Um, SQL isn't complete, so if you have a um, SQL with a long complex where clause, it's pretty hard to um, tell what version of SQL you're looking at. And you have to be pretty lucky when you use show process list because it's um, sort of a snapshot from the moment you run the command. So it's not really suitable for um, always on monitoring. But you can, if you're lucky, you can do some ad hoc stuff with it. Um, for earlier re releases, there are, are patches by Perkona and others that do make this feature a bit more useful. Um, one problem uh, with the show process list is that it requires the process privilege, uh, which some might consider a bit of a uh, security threat. Show InnoDB status um, shows the InnoDB engine internal status information. Uh, it requires even stronger privileges, and, and usually it's impossible to get the super privilege if you're doing performance analysis. So basically, <coughs> InnoDB status and all the tools that use it as a source, like InnoDB or the CACTI modules that gather um, yeah, in information cannot be used if you cannot get super privilege. Um, it's also somewhat expensive in terms of machine resources because it requires a global lock and the lock is held uh, for the um, duration of the query operation, so to speak. The best way to look at performance issues in earlier releases is the slow query log. The 
The issue with slow query log is that it still uses seconds as the resolution. So that makes it somewhat unpractical because I think one second is far too long an execute time for most queries. And you can always set it to one second. And even if one second was acceptable, you wouldn't. Um, you will lose a lot of information because you could have basically queries that take, let's say, 49 centiseconds to run and they keep on coming in all the time. Um, but it will round down to zero and you will never see that information. Tercona has uh, produced a patch that um, uses microseconds for resolution, which is much better. And they also have added some access path information so, the, so you can see uh, or you can get hints about the execution and, uh, and query plan. It's sort of rudimentary because you always see the uh, visited rows and um, fetched rows, but um, you can get, a, get an idea what the server did to get you your data. Oh, one further problem with the slow query log is that um, to make it useful, uh, you will actually have to gather much more than you need so that you can get those uh, often occurring fast sequels. So the log will become quite large and writing to the log will become expensive so you do need separate disks for the slow query log if it's a busy system and you use microsecond resolution. Um, then there are the network methods. So MySQL proxy is basically a proxy machine um, where you can um, either gather and record the SQL statements coming in or actually you can rewrite the statements, which I think is the best use case for MySQL proxy. If you have a um, badly behaving application where you can affect the source code, you can set up MySQL proxy and uh, you can rewrite some of the bad SQLs coming in. Some people um, find MySQL proxy um, to be bad for performance and they rely on even lower level methods like just capturing all TCP packets coming in and um, then parsing out stuff from there. Sulaka, so for example, does that with their um, busiest environments. Have you looked at other tools to do that? Because there are some more tools that will do things like rewriting. Are you rewriting? They're not open source, but things like ScaleArc, ScaleBase do that. I think you can do it with Tungsten, right? Rewrite queries as they come in. Could be. This isn't by any means a complete list. Okay. This is just our stuff that I've come across and used. You can rewrite them to do something completely different. You can rerun the query. You, you're just replacing the query with another query. So, well, yeah, there yeah, is a the security point as well. So, <coughs> from a security point of view, that's not yeah, it's good for a security. I mean, a lot of these these companies that are doing it started it by trying to do things like read write splitting, and realized that they kind of had to redirect the query. And once you can redirect the query, instead of saying, "Well, take this query and point it over to here," now that you're doing something with it, you can say, "Take this query." Uh, replace this string with that string, and then move it over here. Mm -hmm. I'll just give them the answers that I want to give them, not the answers that actually reflect the data. That's in the there data. you go. <laughs> okay, profiling is it's an interesting feature, um, especially in the sense that this wasn't part of the enterprise MySQL release, only the community or the free one. Um, it's really useful, but, but the problem is that you have to build it into your application. Um, if you do build it in, it's a very powerful tool because it, it basically allows you to um, break down every operation um, into quite granular level 
So you can see, for example, how long did it take to parse and optimize a query, which is that, that information is very hard to get otherwise. Um, even with all these methods, it's really hard, or it used to be really hard, to get a complete view about performance and, and especially um, the problems. Um, the only approach um, I came up with is basically to so let's uh, set slow query logging in a uh, such way that it basically records everything. And then you just have to parse that log so that um, uh, you filter out some of the noise. But, um, that's, that was pretty much the only way to um, see everything that's going on in the database. Now, performance schema pretty much changes all that. I won't go into the implementation details. Um, suffice to say, it's implemented as a storage engine that's not enabled by default. You should enable it in a, a, every case, in my opinion. Um, these slides concentrate on, on 5.5, but um, we will come back to some of the 5.5 slides after I show you what's new in 5.6. So the concept is pretty simple. Um, it uses a uh, um, instrument consumer architecture. So instruments are basically um, just uh, instrumentation points in the code. Um, there are much more than 270 um, in, in more recent versions. It's pretty um, easy to control on fly. You can just um, enable and disable both instruments and consumers using SQL. Just update uh, control table and, and that's it. So it's more like a deep trace type thing? Like is, are any of these on by default? Or? Um, no, actually nothing's on by default. But, um, What's the performance overhead? Because I heard that it was off by default because you know people might not want the, the overhead, but maybe it's well, better? Now I'm going to make a, 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 a reference to Oracle again. Okay. Um, setting this on is something like, uh, say, um, statistics level is typical or statistics level is all. I don't think anybody working with Oracle would say statistics level is none. You say well, this right. yeah, it's because it's kind of stupid. Yeah. You know. Right. Like technically, you save performance overhead, but you lose so much information. That why would you do that? Yeah, you can never get more. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, it, I, I would normally say that it's uh, a, a performance benefit because as soon as it gives you diagnostic information that allows you to fix one problem, you're right. actually going faster than you would have ever wanted to be. Mm. So, uh, many DBAs, uh, I suppose, for all databases are conservative, so they don't want things to be on by the default. Uh, uh, if they had, had performance problems that they couldn't diagnose because they didn't have data, then... No, right, I mean, but we're, we're so used to being martyrs and not having data and have to figure it out ourselves yeah. that... No, no, I mean, no, at, at least in the MySQL world, it, it, it's become like the feedback that, that MySQL developers get that it's nice that you develop new features, but they should be turned off by default. Like right. whatever they do. I have no issue with that, uh, yeah. uh, but I, I think you should uh, set up at least some uh, instruments and, 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 and um, some consumer tables to be always on. Probably don't, no, uh, don't need all of them, uh, but you should uh, set the basic ones on because otherwise you have very slim chance of seeing what's actually going on in the system. Yeah, we have the same uh, debates. And discussions with DBAs with, with Oracle over yeah. probably 15 years. Right. And nobody even thinks about turning it off these days. Right. Well, and then we yell at them that they don't have sensible defaults. Like, why is EnoDB file per table not on by default? You know, so yeah. it goes both ways. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not one of these conservative. Right. 
I think that we should not think anymore for something is difficult. We should just understand how it works and use the right things. Exactly. Yeah. What we need. So because this thing, if some, somebody told my database is by default, it means that he doesn't understand what is inside. And, and again, um, if, if defaults really were um, suitable for all, all situations, why would we be able to change anything? True. Okay, um, so the instruments uh, pub publish their information to consumers. Um, consumers are basically tables. And the nice thing about consumers is that they, uh, they keep a bit of history. So even by just setting up uh, the basic instruments and, and, and the couple of high-level consumer tables, you, you will get a pretty good idea on a high level of what's going on. Um, these are the slides we will come back to at the end of the presentation where we uh, went over five, five and six enhancements. Um, as of 5.5, uh, the there are only a couple of um, instrumentation instances. Um, so conditions are basically uh, related to threading. Um, they uh, tell uh, other threads when something, uh, some unit of work has finished and so on. Um, file instances uh, obviously are um, file IO stats, um, mutexes are, are, are related to uh, blocking memory areas and uh, rewrite block are, blocks are related to blocking table rows, roughly speaking. Um, the timing information is practically practically always, um, since everybody usually uses Linux, it's usually um, uses CPU cycle resolution, which is pretty accurate. Um, the timing information is always stored as picoseconds. I just test so that you don't lose any information. What's the granularity of the data that's going in there? So well, it, it, it does. Re uh, it, it, it depends on, on the setup. Uh, on Linux, it usually CPU cycles, so it, it does depend on your CPU speed. Um, again, here's one Oracle reference. I guess Oracle still uses the uh, get time of day before and after, and then to get the time of information. In mm -hmm. those cases, depends. Okay. That's the classic approach. Um, so this um, MySQL implementation is it, it's pretty cheap uh, compared to the uh, getting two uh, system calls per each uh, event. <coughs> but, um, well, this is sort of neat because it's not always accurate because of processor and so on, but it's in my opinion accurate enough. Here's the typical um, setup. Um, so this is just a uh, pretty recent Debian Linux and, and MySQL 5.5. Um, so uh, there are the uh, supported resolutions and uh, what's set up, and then the um, bit of information about the timers and their overhead. So as you can see, the cycle or CPU cycle, it's both, both the cheapest and the most accurate, so it doesn't really make any sense to change that. It's a, it's a good default. So some defaults are good. <laughs> um, again, this is for 5.5. 5.6 um, actually uh, adds uh, staging a statement um, information as well. We'll come back to that. So as a 5.5, um, events are always weight events. Um, we already went through the uh, weight object types, uh, the file, condi 
information and get it fixed pretty much by a block. Um, I don't really have that much to say about this. It's, it's pretty, pretty clear in my opinion. Um, there are a couple of ways um, to filter the information that you publish. Obviously, you can just um, set up the instruments you want, or you can set up um, all the instruments but only a couple of consumers. Or um, you can uh, filter out stuff using Google when you query the consumers. The use is where is a bit of an in joke for MySQL because, um, well, it, it actually uh, it's pretty telling about the history of MySQL because uh, the My MySQL um, explain plan it it. it and it's a uses where clause as a sign of a good query if you have a where clause in your query, which is pretty hilarious in my opinion. So query is good if it has a where clause. Um, these are the tables for 5.5. Five. If you look very carefully, you will see an obvious issue here. But uh, we'll come to it shortly. So basically, all the consumer tables have a. Uh, uh, there's some more like views actually. Uh, there's one table or view for uh, the current wave or the last wave you did that. And then there's. Uh, a short history table um, and a long history table. These are configurable uh, by parameters, so it doesn't have to be 10 weights and 10,000 weights. I think 10 weights is, is, is maybe a bit too much, even though I think for a short history table. Again, this is uh, if, you, if you want to make a reference to Oracle, this is something like. Uh, be a dollar session wave uh, for the current one and be a dollar um, session event for the wave history. The current one? Yeah. So if you're not actually waiting for anything at present, what's in the um, it, current one? It would, it would list uh, the last event for the wave. Right. So can you determine if you're currently on CPU? Or <coughs> so if you know that the last wave event is finished? Or? Uh, the, the, there, is a flag, there is a flag column for that. Okay. And uh, then there are the summary tables, and these, I think, uh, at least, should be on on every instance. <coughs> Again, there's some uh, issue here that you might spot. That is addressed in 5.6. I don't think we should spend too much time on describing the different tables because it's pretty obvious what their role is. Um, then for the contrived example, um, I have to do a, a performance audit on an um, for an online betting company. For the films here, it's pretty easy to guess which one because uh, their service is such that they, they have a, a television feed um, as one part of their application, and then there's the online betting part. Um, this system was um, handling a bit of both. And the customer said that they they're a bit skeptic if their uh, hosting company has an optimal setup. And uh, some of my friends used the service and I was talking with them and they said that actually it's completely unusable. It has been for quite some while. And uh, 
in a nutshell, the issue was that uh, they had a paid for consulting. <laughs> so <laughs> so um, the setup was um, pretty much wrong in every possible way. Uh, they were using a, a really old version of MySQL. Uh, it was 32-bit uh, MySQL on 32-bit OS, even though the uh, hardware was 64-bit. Um, uh, most of their tables uh, was InnoDB, which uh, I was a bit surprised of. Uh, a couple of gigabytes. It was a pretty small database. But then again, they had um, configured all their memory uh, for uh, <coughs> MyISM indexes. And there was only one MyISM table, which was. Uh, I think it was a bit under 100 megabytes or something. They had configured basically a couple of gigabytes of memory for the indexes of that table, which were non existent. And uh, I guess at least here we'll be able to tell you how much memory was configured for InnoDB. As much as you want. I mean, I will have. We're back to the default topic again. Yeah, I mean, uh I don't know if it's 9 or 10. I mean, it's 10 megabytes for the file, but I don't know how much the default is for memory. Maybe none for the buffer pool? It's 8 megabytes. 8 megabytes? Yeah, nothing. Special. So, that was pretty obviously an issue. Anyways, um, we did some test runs just to prove that there is a problem. Um, we first upgraded the operating system uh, to 64-bit. Um, and set up a 64-bit MySQL 5 and 5, then run the test load and, and I did some um, analysis with performance schema. So here I'm just sort of looking at the wait times um, for all the tables. Um, there's something that's popping out. <coughs> so Quite a lot of waits and waits <coughs> have been fairly long compared to others. A couple of snapshots there from the same view. Then I took a look at the uh, private information. Now a picture starts to emerge. Same table again, uh, most of the writes or the DMLs were on that table and obviously uh, it's responsible for all of the bulk of the write wait time. Just for fun, I looked at the select activity. It's pretty high there as well. But the obvious thing is that it seems that the DML actually is the costly operation. Just this one table that gets updated a lot was responsible of uh, 99 and something percent total ride or walk away time for the system and thus most of the service time. And you guess what? That table was the one MyISM table in the database. Of course. Of course. And as we know, MyISM can only have one writer. <coughs> so it was basically the writer who were just queuing to make changes for that table. So it was a really simple case and, and sort of a very contrived uh, uh, scenario for this presentation. Of Again, that's what you get when you go by experts. Um, here's an uh, um, example of what slow very log look, looks like. Uh, here's an example of the schema uh, creation with profiling enabled. So, just an example of what you get using profiling. configuration and status variables that can be looked up um, in the manual. Re 
resource user as well, or how to look at it. Um, now, here's the interesting bit about 5.5. It was, in my opinion, um, as for performance, Shiva, it was a proof of concept. It was the starting point. They got it in, um, which is uh, which is hugely important, but um, it was not yet perfect. And the problem is that you can see where time is spent or where time is lost, but you couldn't identify it who was the culprit. You couldn't, there was no way to, uh, to connect the wavelength information to the SQL statement or even the connection issuing the SQL statement. So, quite far from perfect. But that's what changes in 5.6. Remember uh, how I earlier said that um, uh, all the instruments in 5.5 are weight events? Well, now there are statement and stage events as well. Statement uh, instruments are obviously the ones that record simple statement information. Um, stage instrumentation is something that, um, in simple terms, happens outside. outside, but it, it, it's stuff like sorting uh, result, results and um, sending data. So you can get information for those operations as well. Um, SQL and connection uh, level consumers are added as well as of 5.6.3 and those again are, are consumers that you should always enable at least the summary tables. Um, it's also, in the latest version, it's possible to set up um, instruments and consumers or start up using um, uh, parameters. And I think that was added because um, some instruments, if you, if you set performance schema on, then some instruments were enabled on start startup and you couldn't disable them anymore. So if you want um, want nothing enabled, even those uh, implicit instruments, then you can now control it using startup parameters. And uh, it looks like uh, the performance sheet and enhancement just keep on coming in. I, I don't think it will stop here. I will really see uh, even more and even better statistics in the coming releases. But um, in my opinion, um, the version you should recommend to your customers now is uh, 5.6.3 at minimum because then you can really use performance schema to identify problematic sequels and that's again in my opinion that's the correct or our, probably the best way to address performance problems you need to identify what operation causes your problems and this is by far the best tool in the most sequel world to do that And uh, then one final note about um, running MySQL on Linux uh, 2.6.38 or newer. I've tested it and then, um, well, only in a little sandbox environment, but it's, it per performs quite well. Again, if you if you can affect your customers' platform choice, have the news, um, this kernel.
or, or a later one, and then 5.6.3 or newer. And that's it. I think we're almost on schedule. So, any questions or comments for? I know I'm going to turn on a few things when I get back. Okay, good. Okay, thank you. I think we'll have